Welcome back everyone. For the last video in this section on data loading, we're going to learn about data invalidation. Once again, I have set up some code to save us time. Let me walk you through the new changes. I've continued from where we left off in the previous video. The theme is still about stocks. What I have done though, is moved out the UI and load function from the page into a layout. Everything in page.swelt file I've copied over to layout.swelt and everything in page.js I've copied over to layout.js file. For the page itself, I now have new content. In db.json, which is our JSON server, I've added a new entry called stocks, which contains three stocks, stock D, E, and F. In page.js, I'm now fetching and returning the stocks data. In page.swelt file, I'm accessing stocks on the data prop and rendering all three stocks one below the other. I've also added a heading that says actively trading stocks. If we head back to the browser, we should see the actively trading stocks as well as the three stocks from the previous video, which are now part of the stocks layout. Most active, top gaining, top losing, and actively trading stocks. Hopefully the setup makes sense. Now here is our requirement for this video. As you probably know, stock prices constantly fluctuate. So stock D can become 200 and stock F can become 340. In the browser, if I navigate to localhost 4000 slash stocks, the updated prices are automatically reflected because of watch mode, 200 and 340. Our swelled page on the other hand still displays the stale data, 151 and 240. We can of course have a function that runs every few seconds to update this information, but for now, let's keep it simple. Our requirement is to add a refresh button that will fetch the updated prices for actively trading stocks. Let's see how to do that. Now to update the prices, we basically have to refetch the stocks data from our JSON server. We could try make a new get request to slash stocks and fetch the updated data, but we will end up with a different source for the data for initial render versus subsequent renders, which complicates things. The easier solution is to simply call this load function. That will fetch the data from the API, which will then contain updated prices and inject that updated data into the page. The UI will re-render and we will see the prices reflecting in the browser. But the question is, how do we ask SwellKit to run the load function again? Well, for that, we are going to rely on a function called invalidate available from the navigation module. Import it at the top from $app slash navigation. Then we define a function called refresh. Within the function, we call invalidate. To invalidate, we pass a URL. We pass in localhost 4000 slash stocks. So what happens when this function gets called is that SwellKit finds all the load functions where a fetch request to the same URL is made and reruns all such load functions. In our case, it will rerun load function in page.js file within the stocks folder. Let's add a button that calls this refresh function. On click is equal to refresh. Back in the browser, we can see our refresh button. I'm going to change stock D price to 500, refresh, and our JSON server reflects that. Click on refresh, and we see the updated data. The page load function was rerun, and the UI was updated. Really simple. 
Now, invalidating data through URL can become difficult when you have URLs that accept parameters. In such cases, we can use the depends argument available as part of the load event. So in page.js, from load event, destructure a function called depends. We call this function in the next line, passing in a string as a label to this load function. Let's call it stocks colon actively trading. Now, back in our page, instead of passing in the URL, we can pass in the label. Stocks actively trading. Make sure you have the spelling right. If you now change the price of stock E to 1000 and head back to the browser, we see the price is 100. Click on refresh and the price is now updated. Really easy to update data as you can see. Finally, I would like to point out that invalidate only invalidates load functions with matching URLs or labels. So if we change stock E price to 851 and in layout.swell file, render the price, head back to the browser, the stock price is 351. Click on refresh and the price does not update. You could add another depends in layout.js and invalidate that, but there is a second option. And that is to call the invalidate all function. Import it and call it. This will invalidate all the active load functions. Let's update all the stock prices. Click on refresh and we can see the updated prices. It is very common to refresh data after an event has occurred and invalidation is the way to go about it. I'll now go back to our slide on inputs and add depends to both columns. With that, we come to the end of the section on data loading. We've learned how to load data into a page using the load function. A load function can be universal load function or server load function. Universal load function runs both on the server and in the browser. Server load function runs only on the server. While the latter is good for fetching data involving private keys, the former is good when you have to return values such as a component constructor. We also learned how to use route parameters in our load function. We understood how to handle errors and redirects. We then learned how to load layout data, use parent data, child data, about promise unwrapping, and finally, data invalidation. Hopefully, you're able to see how powerful data loading is in SwellKit. All right, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.